I am currently in an area that is relatively uneventful. It's just one of the routes. There's some people catching some Pokemon, and that is normal. That you would, that is something you would encounter on most of the routes. However, if we go over here, we can actually see it's not actually that calm. There's a reason for that. Hello everyone, I am Alka103 and welcome to another Vortex video. Yes, another one, because I've just been enjoying Pokemon Vortex a lot lately, last week, two weeks, and I've also been very excited and motivated to make content about it, so you're getting another one. And good thing it, I do too, because we have another event. Just two days ago, we had the Star Wars event where all six of the star previous Star Wars Pokemon came back to the game for just a single day on May 4th. It's now May the 6th. And this event is not just a one day event. This one takes, I believe, just over a week. Eight days. And it is a unique one. We haven't actually seen something like it. Meloetta is a Pokemon that is appearing. Now, Meloetta has two different forms. You have standard Meloetta, Meloetta Aria, and when using the move Relic Song in the games anyway, it turns the Meloetta Pirouette form, which is in a normal Psychic, like Meloetta Aria. Pirouette is a normal and fighting Pokemon. Now, how do you obtain it? Well, let me take you to the event center, and we can take a look. Meloetta's Last Serenade. Welcome to the next installment of events in Pokemon Vortex. For this event, you need to gather up a band of Pokemon to summon Meloetta Pirouette. Because Meloetta is a singer, an aria form, and in Pirouette, she is a dancer. What's a dancer without music? Maybe not too much. Depends on the scenario, I suppose, but... Let's make music with a band. Let's bring together a band, and not just a group of Pokemon, an actual musical band with drums, with bass, with singing, with everything. So that is the premise of this event. You have to gather Pokemon that form a band, but you don't just catch them. You evolve into them. Collect Rillabooms to play the drums, Tectricity Amps to play the guitar, Cricketune and to play the violin, Loudred for bass, and Jigglypuff to sing. You can collect any or all six variant band sets. To gain one of each variant of Meloetta Pirouette, and add this rare mythical Pokemon to your collection. Click a variant tab above to get started. Good luck, trainers. The concert of a lifetime is depending on you. So, what this means, if you collect, no, if you evolve during the event into a normal Rillaboom, Turkicity Amped, Cricketune, Loudred, and Jigglypuff, you get a free Meloetta Pirouette. Now, if during the event you evolve into a Metallic Rillaboom, a Metallic Turkicity Amped, a Metallic Cricketune, a Metallic Loudred, and a Metallic Jigglypuff, you get a Metallic Meloetta Pirouette. Mostly when you have to gather certain Pokemon during Vortex events, you have to catch them during that event. But sure, afterwards you can trade or Poke Bay for them as well. But here you need to evolve a Pokemon on your own account. Now let's say you need to get Rillaboom. So the evolution from Thwacky into Rillaboom is the important one. But how you get that Thwacky isn't, isn't listed. It's not important. You can catch the Grookey. You can get the Grookey or the Thwacky, because Thwacky being the middle stage. You can get it from Pokebag, you can get it from Trades, doesn't matter whatsoever. As long as the evolution into Rillaboom, the evolution into Cricketune, into Loudred, or any of the other Pokemon, happens on your account. Let's take a look at what this looks like. If we just look at the normal one, which is most likely the one most people get. We see a stage, and I really like how this was set up. You can see just darkened the five members you need. Now something I have noticed is that some of them are easier to get than others. Now let's let's go over um, the events that I guess it actually lists where the Pokemon spawn. Cricketot, which evolves into <laughs> had to do that at least once. 
can be found on Route 9 in the grass during the day, but nightshade during uh, day and nights. If it's during the day, you can go to Route 9 and find it, but there's, there's a simple map. Looks somewhat basic, but it is mostly accurate. It just misses two areas, and I'll point them out um, in a little bit. But Route 9 is over here, and then Nightshade's over here. So, the Route 9's... I think it was Route 9 that was daytime. Nightshade is day and night, so you'll probably have more chance of finding it there. Although there may be more uh, people hunting for it there. Then, Igly Buff, Route 22. Day and... Uh, no, just nighttime. So, if you're searching F for an Igly Buff during daytime, not gonna work. You need the nighttime. Toxel is in the Steelmouth Power Plant in the basement, although that is during day and night. During the Star Wars event, we'll hunt for Volter BB-8. We'll get also getting myself some Alolan Grimers. I got some extra Toxels as well, um, even before I knew this event was coming. So, I have a decent amount of Toxels, so that's nice. We have Wismer, which is in the Craggy Stair in the Fungal Cavern. Fungal Cavern has three floors. You need the Red Rust Canyon entrance, which is the leftmost one. And then also the Craggy Stairway. Now, Craggy Stairway isn't listed here. I believe Craggy Stairway is on Route 7. Like a little uh, cave system before you get into Lava Ridge. Uh, Cynical's there too in Victini. So that might be an interesting place for you. Yeah, that is where you could get Wismer. And then Grookey is the only rare encounter. Quick attack, English of Talks of Wismer, all common encounters. Grookey is a rare encounter. And it only appears in two locations. Route 17 and 19. One of them is nighttime, one of them is daytime. Only. So then people would swap between areas and it would get really busy. It's the hardest one to find, so people will spend the most time hunting for it there. So, even when this event was announced yesterday, it already got pretty busy in the areas where Grookey appeared. So, what the developers did was make Grookey appear in a bunch more areas to. Uh, have people spread out more to invite people hey spread out across the maps and we won't be as busy on the map for your eyes the server will be a little less stressed as well that way so we one three nine ten twenty four spread across a lot of areas and they can appear during both day and night now why did i say why is this normally relatively uneventful area this is one of the routes where grookey appears this is its daytime spawn and that's why there's quite a lot of people here. Now, I have hunted a little bit for various Pokemon yesterday, but I did mention there's a little bit of a challenge for some of these Pokemon. Louder you can get from Wismer. Wismer's just a common encounter. Nothing too difficult about it. Krikatoon comes from Krikatot. Krikatot's a standard common encounter. Krikatoon should be pretty easy to get. Toxicity Ants comes from Toxel. Tox was a standard, common encounter, evolution is standard as well. Not really a problem. Sure, it'll be a bit more difficult to get like a shiny or a dark, but put a little bit of time into hunting and you'll likely get one of those. It's Rillaboom and Jigglypuff that are more of a challenge. Now, Igglybuff, Jigglypuff pre-evolution, is a common encounter like I mentioned before. But Igglybuff is a happiness evolution. So getting the Igglybuff is simple. It won't take you much time, but then you need to train it for happiness. And I have some tips on how to do that um, in just a moment. I've set up one of my alternate accounts to help you happiness train. Rillaboom, the evolution is pretty basic in terms of you just need level up evolutions from Grookey to Rillaboom. However, Grookey is a, is a starter Pokemon and with that is a rare encounter. It's a lot harder to find. So, Louder Cricketoon, Toxicity Amped, pretty easy to get. The challenge is in Rillaboom Jigglypuff. One of them is hard to find in the wild. The other one is easy to find, but takes a long time to evolve. So, the challenge is in those two. Now, before I go into the hint for both the Grookey and the Jigglypuff, let's look at what it looks like when we actually evolve these Pokemon, because I haven't looked into that yet. Toxicity Amps, Loudred, and Cricketune. Let's just do the normal one first. Let's go for Cricketot. I have a bunch of standard Cricketot, and Cricketot only evolves at level 10. So let's just take a level 15 Cricketot and evolve it into Cricketune. Now if we go back to the event center, click on normal. Yeah, that does fill in the sprite of Cricketot, and it is now colored. 
And once you've evolved into all five of them, I can get my normal Meloet to Pirouette. Now what I do wonder, which isn't fully clear yet, or maybe I've um, read over it, but once I've, let's say, claimed this normal Meloet to Pirouette, does it reset and can I then later get another one? I'm not fully certain on that one. However, let's evolve the other ones too, that we can. We have a Wismer. Actually, we don't have a high level Wismer yet to do this with. However, there's the Magicka Training account, so let's just grab ourselves a level 6 Wismer, which does have a ghost move, right? Yeah, it has a Slurmish. We're fine. We go to type normal. So if you are going for this event and you want to train up your Wismer pretty easily, level 6. Boost it all the way to level 100 isn't needed. If you get, if you let's say catch a level 11 Wismer, you can do this exact same thing. The training account will go a little bit faster because you deal a little bit more damage. I'm making use of training accounts using one of my level sixes that I caught over time. That's one Lunala. It takes a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. And then once this battle is over, my Wismer will be instantly level 100, which is higher for EXP, higher for points if you care about that. Um, you get a good amount of money from it as well, because the money you get in a battle, to my knowledge, is based on the amount of EXP every individual Pokémon earns. It's not a set amount. You, there's a standard and pretty easy to understand if you look into it, uh, calculation to figure out what amount of XP you get. That's always set in stone. I believe there's a random multiplier to the money, though. But if you, let's say, get 500 XP from a fight, you'll get a lot less money than if you get, let's say, 20,000 XP. There'll be a lot more money in it. So you'll see that I actually get quite a lot of money from just this one battle. Now, I have, for the Cricketide, I evolved one that was already high enough leveled, and it is possible to catch Cricketune up to level 18. However, if you catch, let's say, a level 7 Cricketide and you want to evolve that, then using it against a training account, but let's say... Uh, actually, I'll, I can show you in a second how to help train that just uh, as, as a help for gu helpful guide. But first, we have this Wismer. We evolve it into Loudred. And as you can see, Loudred is now filled in. Now, just to confirm, Loudred can evolve again. So what happens if we evolve the Loudred again? We've already done the evolution for Loudred, so that just stays on the account. Now, what if, let's say, you have that level 6 cr Cricketide? Let's just use one of them as an example. Level 9 Cricketide. Can't evolve yet. So what I do is take Cricketide, and on my team I have at least one Pokemon with an immunity, such as my Spiritomb. I go to the trading account for the Spiritomb. Which can be type Ghost. Quick attack would go out first, put the immunity Pokemon in the second slot. Doesn't take long for Quick attack to be taken out. And the Spiritomb, or Fero, or Laron, or whatever immunity Pokemon you have uh, in the second slot finishes off the fight. Now, because you use a level 100 in this fight, it won't gain too much XP. Like the level 6 Wismer did that went straight to level 100. But this is over 2500 XP, so that's over 5 levels. So that's, whoop into level 14. So just one of those fights and you get your Cricketot up to a point where it can evolve. So that is what you could do to help your Cricketot evolve. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, that is actually, by the way, also how you can train your Toxel into Cricketune Amped. A Cricketune Amped? Toxtricity Amped. No, toxtricity. Yep. Toxel. Do I have any high level Toxels? Probably not, so I'll have to train them in the same way. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this video, but basically do exactly what I just did with Cricketot. Cricketot plus an Unity Pokemon. 
and just repeat that battle a few times and Toxel will be level 30. Make sure you select the correct evolution. Because it's Amped, not Loki. So I'll just do that one off screen just to save some time in the video. We added a few Grookey, I believe they're all my OT. Yeah. Let's take this Grookey to Thwacky. Thwacky only needs level 35 to evolve. So we're going to Rillaboom, we have an extra Rillaboom. There we go. Now I already had a Mystic Rillaboom, already had a Metallic Rillaboom, they do not count, so let me just show you. We've got a Mystic, Rillaboom doesn't show up. The evolution needs to happen during the event. So this is one of the few cases, maybe the first real case, of me having I've trained and evolved a lot of my Pokemon with Pokedex already works against me. Because now, let's say I have one shiny Toxel and one shiny Toxtricity Amped, I have for the shiny Meloetta Pirouette, I would have to evolve that shiny Toxel and then go catch a new shiny Toxel. Which is a bit of time I didn't expect to need to spend. Here you can see I already have three of these. Uh, I'll do the Toxicity on my own and you can just do the same thing with all the different ones. Like the others will um, be harder to obtain obviously because they're variant forms. Now how to deal with Iglybuff. I have made a tutorial video in the past on happiness. And that is still accurate. However, there is something I learned, I think, in the week, two weeks after I made that video. That is actually very helpful that isn't part of that video. So, I have considered, I'm not promising I will do it, but I've considered remaking the happiness tutorial. And then including this new thing that I learned. Because that happiness tutorial video focuses on one. So, let's say I take... If I just go, not Iggly Buff, that's not a, that's not a name of a Pokemon, Iggly Buff. If I just want to train a normal Iggly Buff, let's say I take this one, this, this normal Iggly Buff that I already have at level 100, I want to train this one. What I would do, just to get through battles pretty quickly, fight Misty, Lieutenant Surge, Erica, pretty quick fights, um, but it, if I click slowly a little bit on Misty and Surge, I can, I can do battles in just over 10 seconds, then I get beaten by that 10 second timer. And then I just repeat that and repeat that and repeat that and repeat that and we keep going. However, remember that, like if you don't know the details on how happiness training works and the happiness hearts and how many more happiness points you get, I do recommend searching for Alka 1 and M3 happiness tutorial vortex. And you will find that video on YouTube and it explains in detail how that works. Um, so what I'm about to explain is in addition to that, it assumes you already have the information for that video. So if you're very confused about some of the stats and mechanics that I'm referring to, watch that video first because it is, it is still very helpful. But that video ref gives suggestions on how to train a single Pokemon at a time. However, for this event you might want to train one of every Iggly buff. So, let's go to Iggly buff again. We have a normal. I'm actually going to take two normals. Take a dark Iggly buff. I unfortunately don't have a Mystic. Um, so I'll have to do without that one. We take a Metallic. We take a Shadow. The level doesn't matter, although having it higher than, let's say, level 10 is, is useful. Um, because of something I'll show you in just a second. So now we have our team full of Iggly buff. Again, previously I would say just fight the gyms and until the first Iggly buff is, uh, has enough happiness hearts to evolve the Jigglypuff. But over time, that still wastes a lot of time. You get your happiness points in a battle if your Pokémon participates in a battle. If multiple Pokémon participate in a battle, all of them gain happiness points. Some of them may gain one, some of them may gain two, because it's random if you get one or two happiness points per fight. And you need 73 happiness points to get a single happiness heart. And then you need three happiness hearts for most happiness evolutions, like Igglybuff and Jigglypuff. 
So that's a minimum 37 fights you need to do. Minimum max 73 per heart. So this Igly buff, if I use them in the same fight as this Igly buff, this one might get one, this one might get two. So, what have I set up? Go to battle any user, just like you would against, let's say, training accounts. But then go to baby Quilava. That's one of my alternate accounts that I haven't used in a very long time. But I've set up that account with some very weak Pokemon. All level 10 or below, and none of them have immunities. Yeah, sure, some have resistances, like Full Beat and Dimjar and Torchic resist grass. But they don't have immunities. So let's say if I would have wanted to train a Chingling and its best damaging move is Confusion, I would want to just be able to hit everything with Confusion. If I have a Purloin, which gets hit neutrally by most types, then a Psychic type that I want to train, like Chingling, doesn't work and I have to use a different move that it might not have. Or it might just be a bit slower. But this way, none of them have immunities. That works pretty well. So the idea with this is... First Pokemon against first Pokemon. Second Pokemon against second Pokemon. Etc. So, Iglybuff against Bergmite. Pound. Gone. Igly Other Iglybuff against Shimchar. Pound. Gone. Dark Iglybuff against Torchic. Pound. Pound. Gone. Now that needed two attacks, because this Iglybuff is only level 19. This is level 15. So optimally, I would put some level 6 Pokemon here, and super optimally, I would put things that don't confuse you. I'm gonna change this Chingling, because that confusion is annoying. Also try and get some level 6 Pokemon, like, I don't know, a Caterpie or something, so they can deal even less damage. This was a mistake, I should've- I, I'm too used to... My training accounts, now this Shadow Igly buff isn't getting up points. Now, but this Shiny Igly buff would then be using in the Squirtle. It takes a few hits. To take him out. That's why I said maybe level 10 minimum is useful to deal a bit of damage. Because if I would send in a level 6 Igly buff, there's a chance that that Squirtle might beat me. Then again, as long as you have at least one Pokemon that's higher level, like a level 100, they can then finish off that Pokemon and it's all fine. Now, all five of these Iglybuff should have been six, but I forgot to click on the fifth one. All of them get happiness points. All of them would either one or two randomly decided for each individual one. By doing this, instead of using the same Iglybuff for the same battle, it takes longer for the individual Iglybuff, let's say this first one that I showed, it takes longer for that individual Iglybuff to get through enough happiness hearts to evolve. However, in the long term, it actually saves time. Because in the long term, I will have six Jigglypuffs in the time that I would have otherwise maybe only had four, and then I would still need to individually train two of them. So it takes longer to get to one evolution, but it's faster to get to six. And if you just want to get to a bunch of happiness training Pokemon, uh, especially for this event, you just get a normal, a shiny, a shadow, a metallic, a mystic, and a dark. Or you just want to train two of your Wrigley buffs and meanwhile you also want to train like an Eevee and a Chingling that you happen to have anyway. Go for it. There hasn't been a, a happiness point boost event for quite a few months at least. Or maybe a year, I don't remember. But once that's up, this is, I believe, the best method to quickly evolve a lot of your Pokemon. As I said, it's not quickly for one individual Pokemon, then there's a better one. And that's mentioned in that tutorial video that I referred to earlier. But if you want to train an entire team, like I'm going to do with the Igly buffs, that's the way to go. Now, I don't expect to be able to get to a dark, a metallic, a shiny, mellow, and a pirouette, because that requires me to get a dark, and a metallic, and a shiny Grookey. Now, for Igly buff, I can just spend a little bit of time catching the Igly buff, and then j spending the time to do the happiness training. But that's simple, it's just time consuming. Catching the Grookey is harder. Encountering the Grookey is hard already. Because it's a rare encounter, and then hoping it's one of the variants is even harder. So one of the if you don't have many of these Pokemon, like I have a lot because I've been collecting for the Pokedex. But if you don't have a lot of these Pokemon, a suggestion that I could give is hunt for the Grookey first. And depending on the variant of Grookey that you get, even if it's a normal one, like here. I caught two or th no, three normal ones yesterday already. 
without getting a variant. Depending on the one, the variant of Garuki you catch, you hunt for the others. I got a normal Garuki, so then spend the time to get your normal Toxel, your normal Igly buff, your normal Wismer, and your normal Toxel. I think that's the one I hadn't mentioned yet. Or Krikotot. Get the normal band together. Now, if during that time you get a Shadow, Toxel, and a Metallic Wismer, catch them too. Might be good for your Pokedex, you might be able to use it later in this event as well. But focus on the normal ones. Maybe for Iglybuff you want to catch multiple of them anyway, so that you can just train them together to save um, time, over time, in getting all those happiness evolutions. Let's go back to the event center if it says anything about the length of the event. Yes, the event ends at May 13th um, BSD. It is now the 6th, so of the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th. Eight days of the event, and it ends midnight British time. I repeat, midnight British time. That means if you're in the east coast of the US, use eastern time zone. That means it's 6 p.m. for you. If you live in central Europe, such as me, it ends at 1 a.m. at the start of the 14th. You can do that calculation for yourself, but it's British time midnight at the end of May 13th. Clarified me here saying 23.59. So it's clear that it is May uh, 13th. That is when the event ends. So we have eight days to do the evolutions. And make sure that once you've done all your evolutions, you click claim on this Meloetta, because otherwise you're still not getting your Meloetta. And as the event center says, the Meloettas will be obtained in promo code form. So you go to your item inventory, to promo codes, and it will be listed here. And then you will get your Meloetta that I currently don't have yet, but I will be working towards it. Um, I'm gonna keep working on getting those Igly buff evolutions. I needed those anyway, I haven't done much of happiness training because it just takes a long time and it's actually a pretty tedious process. Um, so that's why I don't have any Jigglypuff or Wigglytuff, or things like Lopunny or Chimeco, or actually not that seen that much on people's accounts. Because it's a tedious process, even though Chingling and Baneary and Igglybuff and Pichu are easy to obtain, the evolutions are happiness evolutions. So that's why you'll see a lot less Sylveon, Umbreon, and Espeon than even a Rillaboom. Just because, like, yeah, Grookey is harder to get, but the happiness training is tedious and it's annoying. That's why the happiness, the occasional happiness boosting event is appreciated. So we can just do it a lot faster. So I will definitely, if another Happiness Evolution thing comes around, because that's really what I'm waiting for with the Happiness Evolution for the Pokedex. I just ca I try to catch three of every Igly buff, and then mass evolve them, two of each to get these. So even if I evolve two of my standard um, Igly buff, you see I had two standard ones because I didn't have the Mystic. Doesn't matter, I'm not losing anything for the Pokedex for the Igglybuff specifically, because I need both Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff anyway. I just get two Jigglypuff, and then one of them evolves with Moonstone and Wigglytuff. That's how I'm gonna do it. And meanwhile, you can hunt here, but as I said, Grookey has been spread out across this is eight, ten something different routes. I just happen to be here. Um, but there's a bunch of different routes where Grookey can be obtained. Uh, just to repeat, uh, all the routes where you can catch the Pokemon are listed here. Um, there's some questions that you might have about the event that are listed on this page as well by going to the Event Center. You can get to that by just clicking on your account and then Event Center. If you have any questions about the events, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them with the information I have. If you have a very critical question, something that maybe isn't mentioned in the FAQ, but is a good question that you have, ask it anyway. And if it is a very good question that I feel like should be added to the FAQ, maybe I can pass it on to the devs. Not saying that like we'll get an instant reaction, but perhaps that is a chance. But if you have any questions, let me know. But otherwise, what do you think of this event? I am very excited about it. It is a very unique thing. We've had done evolutions before. I remember, I think it was Christmas event. Um, at the end of last year, the end of 2021, where you had to evolve Eevee into a bunch of different, um, 
of its evolutions, and depending on which evolution you did, you got points, like specific Christmas points, and then you could spend those points on redeemables, which would eventually get you Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon Christmas. Which I think is really cool. Um, but, like, I, that was a pretty cool event. I didn't like it as much, in a sense. This event is very different. I like the uniqueness of it, that you need to do evolutions during the event. It's not, oh, Meloet appeared in the wild, like, let's say, with the Star Wars event, you have to catch it in the wild, which is... I suppose it's more of a standard type of event, or just fine if that happens multiple times. But this is a very unique one, yet too, not too complicated of one. Three of them, as I said, the Toxicity Amps, the Loudred, the Cricketune, aren't that hard to obtain. Igloobuff isn't hard to obtain, just takes some time to evolve it. And Grookey takes some takes quite a lot of time to get it. However, Grookey is a rare encounter compared to the legendary encounter rate of all the Star Wars Pokemon. So if you participate in that Star Wars event, this will be easier. This will very likely be easier for you. Getting the Grookey. Is yes, there will be three Pokemon normally on a route that can appear. Uh, for example, if you take Route 17, one of the places where Grookey would normally appear. Uh, nighttime, I believe, yeah. You can encounter Beedrill and Venomoth when you get f something for the rare pool instead of Grookey. But I feel like the chance of an, an individual Grookey, I think, is still higher than the legendary of that route, which in this case is Genesect. So you'll be able to find some Grookey. Still, you'll need to spend some time with Ace of Brown Counter after all. But you'll be able to get a Grookey. And you have eight days. Like, it is Friday now. It ends at the end of next week, Friday. So even if you only get three of your normals now, and you only get two of your shinies, you have the time. You don't have to catch all the Grookey today, you don't have to evolve all of your Igly buff today, you have the time to go do that. So, Baby Kulav is the account I have set up. I'll try to set it up with um, even lower level Pokemon, especially Chingling, because it can evolve. Not, sorry, evolve. It can confuse your Pokemon, as it happened earlier. Um, I don't like that. Confusion doesn't really matter if you hit them in one go, I believe. Um, but that is something I'm gonna just look into. Maybe I'll catch some like low-level Metapod, like uh, or Caterpie or something, and do it that way. But this is the way that I would, I will be trading most of my Iglybuff. They don't get much of EXP, so the shiny Iglybuff may take a little, little while to take out the Squirtle. Might take a few hits. But, doesn't really matter. Like, if you want it to be a little higher leveled, you can either use the training accounts um, to train Igneybuff up a little bit. It is fairy type. It does not have fairy moves. So you can either give it a fairy move, use it against a fairy training account, take a long time against a normal type training account. Actually, it has fainted. Like, yeah, you can use it against um, type normal and up it in levels that way. That would be a way you can do it. Although, that was only that Igly buff. The rest doesn't have it. Depends on the Pokemon, I guess, or what I taught it. Uh, but otherwise, you can even use the Spirit Tomb trick. Just have an immunity Pokemon alongside it against another training account. That is something you can do as well. And have it that way increase this level a little bit so that this battle would go a little faster. Well, that was the video for today. As I said, if you have any questions about the event, let me know. Let me know what you think of the event, because I'm really excited about it. Um, I will likely, I'm, I'm currently thinking of making another video on this event nearing the end of the event, just to show you my progress and what I've gotten to. And I feel like I want to make at least one video where I claim one of the Meloetas, just to show off what that looks like, even though it'll probably just be that once you get the entire band, this one's lit up, you can click this button, and then you get the promo code. But I feel like I want to show that off. We'll see if I can get to it. This is what I'm going to do for a while. Catch some Grookies, hunt for them. And then train up these Igly buff for happiness evolutions. I've done a few battles where they have happiness points. You can't see exactly how many happiness points they have. But once they've hit that first happiness heart, you will see it here. And once they hit three, I can do the Jiggly buff evolution. Now for Toxel, I have quite a few of all of them. Although well, one shiny Toxel only. So if I want to get for the shiny Meloetta Pirouette, I'll need to remove, in a sense, the shiny Toxel from, from this and get a duplicate Toxicity Amped. But if it allows me to get this shiny event Pokemon, I'll just go catch another shiny Toxel. 
Uh, so for this case, I don't really mind it that much. Cricket I have quite a few of them. I think I'm missing one of them. Don't quite remember. And then uh, Wismer, I have most of as well. No, actually, I don't. I just have dark, metallic, and some standards. I need to catch more Wismer. But yeah, if um, I'm hoping to get a dark rookie next, shiny shadow, whatever is cool too, because I need them for my Pokedex anyway. As you can see here, like I already have a mystic and a metallic really boom. If I wouldn't have done those evolutions yet. I would have been able to get them for the event. Like, at least set up the Mystic and the Metallic over here, like in the event center, but unfortunately, not the case. I'll just have to catch a new Grookey. But that'll help me get towards some other things uh, as well, and then maybe after the event, I can then sell the duplicates. Um, one quick more mention, uh, my Pokebay has quite a few Pokemon on it right now, some standard ones, maybe Metallic Radix and Mystic Dunsparce. I have a Mr. Cricketot up there, a bunch of Pokemon from back in the Star Wars event and just before it that I caught that I've now have duplicates of that I don't need anymore. A few avatars and a Lolan Sand Chew. I have a Grookey up. If I get duplicates, especially of Grookey, but also some of the other ones that you need to evolve, um, even just Igloo and Wismer, but especially the, um, the variants such as Dark and Shiny. I will put them up in Pokebay. These ones are seven day um, bids, but I started them before the event started. Uh, so they will run out before the event ends, so people can still evolve them for the event. Um, so I'll probably put like two, three day bids if I, let's say, catch a, another, I don't know, the shiny Igly buff that someone might need that they don't want to go catch. So they're short so that people can still get them and then evolve them during the event. Just wanted to point that out for a second and I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future for Vortex and then I'll see you tomorrow for Battle Revolution again and then probably Yu-Gi-Oh! the day after. Daily videos will continue. I already have a few ideas for Vortex for a, like a beginner friendly basic feature tutorial for Vortex. Uh, a few other ideas, something I want to do. I'm really excited and motivated to make Vortex content. Hope you're looking forward to that too. Thanks for watching. And make sure you always remember that you are worth it. Goodbye.